is happening. We are walking to the final table of this WSOP event. Hello, welcome back to Vlogland where we are currently in June. June 2022 was a very exciting time because it was my very first time playing in the World Series of Poker. I was very, very pumped for it. I had been practicing a lot. I had been final tabling a lot actually, weirdly, which now I realize is not very common, but I thought it might have been in the beginning. And all the studying, all the practice, all the tournament stuff was all leading up to this series where we were going to play just a few buy-ins at the lower level of the World Series of Poker and we start by meditating on this lake. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning right now and um, we have our very first WSOP side event tournament today at 10 a.m. The past couple months I've been studying tournaments just so I could play some side events and feel semi-confident in them. And a couple weeks ago I was final tabling like every tournament and winning a lot and uh, just felt very, oh my gosh, there's, sorry, I'm distracted. There are duck eggs here. There's duck eggs. I've never seen a duck egg, but I imagine these are duck eggs. Anyway, it might be turtle eggs. There's a turtle right there. Oh my God, I'm so distracted. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, I was feeling pretty confident. I was like, all right, WSOP's like three weeks away. I've been freaking crushing it, <laughs> running deep. And then the past like three tournaments I've played, I have made the dumbest mistakes and busted at the bubble. Like the bubble is the difference between making money and not making money. So a couple weeks ago, I was the literal one person, like there was one person left until people make money and it was me. I ended up going out and it wasn't even just, I don't mind being the person, I mean, it sucks, but the way that I went out, it, is so infuriating because I didn't have to. I just didn't have to. I didn't have to take like these big risks when I had a pretty decent sized stack going into the, you know, the bubble and I made dumb plays. And so those are sticking with me today and I will very much be cognizant of my stack and not making those plays around the bubble. Um, so that's a thing that I'm gonna work on. Um, also, another thing is that this is the first low buy-in tournament of the series. So it's a $500 buy-in, which means that there probably there probably will be like a fuck ton of people, just a ton of people. I'm expecting there to be like thousands of people. As a whole, this event will probably be the biggest field that I've ever been part of. Um, I think my biggest so far has been 2,500 people and I actually got sixth place in that one. So that was pretty cool. And made me feel good, but um, but yeah, I don't know. This is my biggest live tournament that I've ever played. I'm just really excited to be part of the action today. So I'm gonna do a little meditation on the link. And I do this because I like to remind myself that no matter what happens today, I, I love my life. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter when or lose today, I love my life. I'm actually not expecting that much because the chances <laughs> of this one with so many people involved or it's uh, gonna be tough a tough one there's a lot of variance but the uh prize pool is a five million guaranteed for a 500 dollars buy-in that is like insane anyway i gotta leave in like 30 minutes so i'm gonna meditate and then off to the races we go wish me luck low, i'm feeling low for nothing. We started the tournament at 10 and it's 10.45 right now. Um, I was playing super tight, like the tightest, the tightest you could ever play. Anyway, we get to a hand. I have ace queen of hearts. All hearts come. He's betting, I'm calling, on the river. He checks. I bet kind of small, not huge. And he shoves all in again. So I call, because I'm not folding the nut flush. This mother had a straight flush. So I lost nut flush to straight flush. And 
I'm very sad. There's nothing I could have done about it. You're not holding that hand. But I'm still really sad that this is like the first event that I've ever played and I was so excited for it. I didn't even make it an hour. Update, we are walking the strip, walking it off in a uh, probably 90 degree weather right now in our hoodie here, but that's fine. Um, what a beautiful day out. What a beautiful day. It's probably like 85, so it's nice. Did some retail therapy, got some very sparkly things. I might change into that later. I got a hoodie that completely sparkles, and I got a fanny pack that's also completely sparkles. And um, what else? Some earrings, I think, and a necklace that says bitch and sparkles. Yeah, busted ace high flush to straight flush. Didn't even see the straight flush on the board, honestly. It was very hidden, but bummer. So I ended up going on a walk, feeling a lot better, going back in full sparkles and re-entering the housewarming event and getting so close to the money, playing much better, running much better, getting so close to the money, didn't quite make the money. I thought I was much farther away, but uh, it turns out I was like right near the bubble when I busted, which is unfortunate. I wish I had known that, but I ran my pocket sixes into pocket tens when I was short stacked and there's nothing I could do about that except for hope that the next event that we enter maybe we would make our first profit in the World Series of Poker. But first, we visited the Punter's Pad. Dude, okay, hello, good morning. I'm at this place called Punter's Pad. I got invited here by my neighbor Katie and, uh, and Chris, but Katie. And uh, it's a place that gets rented every summer for the WSOP. Pro poker players come and stay here. And I'm not gonna show you some, there's some secrets that I wanna show you, but um, anyway. She was telling me how there's like all kinds of, all kinds of sports stuff and like this house is huge and I got in and I was like, it doesn't look that big. Like there's a pool, but it doesn't look that big. Check this out. So it's just like, yeah, it's a big house. It's nice, right? But then look at this. What? Where does this go? Oh shit. got a bowling alley, a pool room, and a basketball court with a jacuzzi indoors down here. Wow, this place is sponsored, I believe, by America's Card Room, and uh, which is a poker site, big poker site, and they're doing a thing called Punter Olympics today, where we're doing a bunch of drunk, maybe drunk, probably drunk, sports games, and they invited me to play sports games drunkenly with them, I said yes. When I am drunk, I am really good at everything, is what my brain tells me. So, I, put me in, coach. I'm there. Let's do it. And of course, there's an outdoor basketball court as well. Summer! What a glorious weekend of really silly, ridiculous games. We played so many fun games, like pool noodle pool and blind bowling. And I met so many awesome people in the poker community. Just some of the nicest people I have ever met. If you wanna check out the videos that we did, I'll leave a link in the description. It's on America's Card Room channel and it's like the very, some of the very first punter's pad videos that they did. Uh, so fun, so cool. Then the next day, we had a $600 deep stack that we spontaneously decided to play. It wasn't on the original schedule, but it was a low buy-in and I was still, not feeling like I scratched the itch of getting to play my first WSOP event because of how the housewarming event went. Okay, hello, we're back at the Paris. This will be the second WSOP event that we're doing. It is a deep stack. It's 
probably the biggest buy-in I've played so far, which is only $600, but still the biggest buy-in. Yes, at this point, $600 was the biggest buy-in I'd ever done. So there were 5,717 people that entered this event and I made a joke very early in the event that I was just lighting $600 on fire and then I was gonna go play cash games later. Secretly, I was hoping that I would maybe, you know, min cash and get to post on Instagram a little like, ooh, my first cash at the WSOP, you know, I did it. We ended up making it past Late Ridge, so we got a final count of how many people were left, how many people entered, and what the final prize pool would be. And I, again, made a joke that we'd only have to get through 5,000 people now. And then, we made it to the bubble. At one point during the bubble, a guy at my table announced that he had a 15 minute gift card for a free massage, a free 15 minute massage, and whoever wins the next hand would win this 15 minute massage. So a guy in early position looks down and he shoves all in. I look down at, in late position at Queens, and I reshove, and everyone else folds, it's heads up, I win, and he went home and I want a free massage. It's the first time I've ever gotten a massage at the table, by the way. What's interesting to me is how one little thing can change the whole course of events in a tournament, because had I not gotten this massage, a few orbits later, I would look down at ace-queen off after somebody in front of me shoved. Now, normally, ace-queen off is a hand I would call with because I covered the guy that shoved and ace queen off is a good hand and the guy that shoved was short stack but it would have taken half of my stack and I just didn't feel like flipping at that point. You know, I have to win a flip. Let's say he has a pocket pair. I have to win that flip with a 49% chance of winning. Um, and I just didn't feel like, like doing it. I just wanted to enjoy my massage, preserve my stack and get through the money bubble. And so I didn't and who knows what could have happened during that hand. Two hands later, that guy did bust, but not by me. And then I busted the guy that busted him. So I ended up with all the chips anyway, but with a different hand, completely different hand. Actually, it was pocket queens again, which is so weird because, spoilers, pocket queens took me out of so many tournaments after this. I digress. Pocket queens were saving the day all day, every day during this tournament. We actually started stacking a lot of people. We had to win a lot of flips, but we just did. And it became a running joke at the table that every time I pulled my phone out to film what I thought might be my final hand in the tournament, I just ended up taking people out. So it became this running joke that if I pull my phone out, you're going home. We ended up going to day two with a pretty big stack of chips. I think we were six in overall chips, which is crazy. And then I had to get through a whole bunch more people on day two and win a whole bunch more flips. And I won so many flips. I just kept winning them. At one point, I shoved queen 10 suited and ran into kings who covered me and the board ran out and I hit my flush. So, Positive variance was definitely there that day. Um, I also did have to get a lot of bluffs through. I had to know the right time to show, but wow, the positive variance was really on our side that day. So I haven't given you a face-to-face -face update in a while, but we're on day two currently of the Deep Stack tournament, uh, the WSOP Deep Stack tournament. And um, there are only 15 people left and it has been a crazy ride and I am on a dinner break right now. And uh, when I go back in there, there are, uh, there's more poker to be played. I'm on four and a half hours of sleep because we had to play till two in the morning yesterday on day one and I didn't get home till 2.30 and then I didn't get to bed until like, you know, whenever, almost three. And then Franklin just has to wake me up at 7.30 every morning. So I'm on uh, four and a half hours of sleep. Um, a lot of hours of playing poker, a lot. Um, but yeah, I am I am speechless right now. So um, I just wanted to give you an update, but I will update you later um, when I have like more words to say like out of my mouth. Yeah, okay, thanks. I feel crazy. Okay, it's happening. We are walking to the final table of uh, this WSOP event. I took a hit on my chips, but that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're not going to think about it. We're not thinking about that right now. Walking to the final table in a WSOP event and only the second event that you ever played in the series was so surreal because... I have nothing else to compare to. This was my first ever time cashing at all in the WSOP and it was at a final table. Luckily, I had the experience of being at a few final tables before this, so I just tried to play my game the way that I studied it, the way that I've practiced it, 
and do the best I can with my chips, which was mostly trying to outlast the shorter stacks and make it to the six figure win. At the final table, there were nine people and I think I was sixth in chips. Maybe I was seventh, I can't remember, but the six figure payouts didn't start until fourth place. And I, in my head, I just was like, if I could just outlast five of these people here, then I could cash out at six figures. Obviously I wanna go for the bracelet, but my stack was looking pretty short and the blinds were going up real fast. So I played super, super tight. I shoved a few times. Once was with ace jack offsuit that ran into pocket nines. Luckily an ace came on the board. Thank you. And we ended up doubling up. Then the second time was with the same guy. I open raised pocket tens. He three bet me and then I shoved on him. He tank folded. So then I got chips again, which was great. And then the final time, which was the time I just had to shove, I had six big blinds left. I was under the gun and also the cutoff because there were only four people left. And I had a six offsuit and if I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna get a, bit, a better hand in the blinds, and if I didn't shove this hand, I would lose two and a half more blinds being in the blinds because of the antis and all that stuff. So I just thought this was my best shot. Shoved ace six off, got called by ace eight off after he tanked for a while, and the board ran out, we didn't hit our hand, but we busted fourth place for a six figure win, which was really, really, really cool, very surreal. The guy that busted me went on to win the bracelet, which was cool for him. I guess he's been playing for 15 years, and this was the first bracelet that he ever won, and it was just, it's really cool to see what kind of people I was playing against that entire time, and to cash out in fourth place uh, was amazing. I got to take a cool douchey picture of me holding $100,000 in cash on the way to deposit it in the bank. <laughs> like, it was also very weird depositing over $100,000 into the bank because, in cash, because I came in with a backpack I was very scared. There was a line, so one of the bankers asked if I was depositing cash or check, and I said cash, and he asked how much, and I said $120,000, and then he said, what? And I said, $120,000, and he said, oh, okay, like it's normal. And then he just had me wait in line more, and I was so nervous. And then to deposit it by taking out bricks of cash, this is so weird. Life is so weird. That was just an experience of a lifetime, I believe. But I think what touched me the most out of all of this was definitely the people. I didn't even know anybody was there, really. I had seen my neighbors, Katie and Chris, shout out to them. And I had seen my coach walk up, which was awesome. Um, but I didn't really see anybody else until I had shoved that ace jack offhand and won the pot. I hear cheering in the background and I turn around and there's like a whole rail of people. There's Steve was there, I didn't even know he was there. He was hosting Crypto Corner that day and I didn't, didn't think he was gonna make it. And then a bunch of people from my Hand History group, um, the Hand History Lounge, shout out to Andrew Neamey and Benton Blakeman and everybody that showed up at the rails there. Um, and then uh, a bunch of people that I met and I just met at Punter's Pad showed up because they were playing a tournament on the same day and they came up and they, and they railed and then we had drinks after after, and it was just so cool just to feel that kind of love and support. I had just never like expected it or felt such a sense of belonging. Like I felt like I had looked for that feeling all of my life and never quite gotten it. And there it was in the most unexpected way. And it was really, um, it really took me a while to process all of those emotions. Hello, good morning. It's Thursday today and I am still processing all of the events that happened this week. I am still, uh, I am still speechless on what to say about that. Today, I got woken up by getting peed on by Joe. Joe's my cat, if you're new here. He, uh, is an asshole. He's an asshole. And now I'm doing laundry today and, uh, also I have a guy coming over, an electrician, who is going to install some new, some new light fixtures. Hell yeah. Oh my god, you're getting replaced. And you down there, you're getting replaced too. By you down there. I'm very excited about that. There's a lot of excitement going on this week. The light fixture is probably number one thing that happened that's exciting. <laughs> Remember when I said that I was gonna use poker winnings to get more things for the house? Well, we're doing it, light fixtures. And then I'm pro I need blinds because my bedroom gets so bright now. It's hot, it's 170 de 107 degrees today. Yes, we can fund some house projects now. I'm so excited about that. In addition to just having like 
a way more massive poker bankroll. I've only ever put $1,000 into my bankroll ever. I don't know what to do with this. I have so many feelings. My dad said he was proud of me. I'm so happy. <laughs> I think Nikki cut this out. I'm not a little bitch, okay? Anyway, we're getting light fixtures today. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> Check it out, check it out, check it out. Okay, so this one I thought was actually gonna go a little bit longer. I kind of wanted it to be visible through the window, but uh, I don't know if there's any way to show you this, but it makes the ceiling, it emphasizes the grandeur of this, the high ceilings, whereas the other light fixture was so low that it, it didn't really feel like the ceilings were high, if that makes sense. And the ceilings are freaking huge here. So yeah, I don't really actually mind it being up there that, that much. And I really like the design of it. And if we decide to get, you know, a longer chandelier sometime soon, then we can always switch it out. It's no big deal. This was the, also the same light fixture that we had in our condo. I don't know if you recognize it, but it's not the same fixture because I let the buyers keep that one, but it's the same product. I just ordered it again because I liked it so much. I had just gotten it and then we moved out. So uh, yeah, I really liked that aesthetic. Uh, both of these are from Overstock, I believe. So yeah, not, not very expensive. Uh, the second main thing that I wanted was to install dimmer switches because none of the lights in this house have dimmer switches. And I'm very sensitive to light. And so at nighttime, uh, like we hardly ever have lights on in our house because I just don't like how bright the lights are. And I don't wanna have missing light bulbs. I, I tried that, it just looks bad. So I had them install dimmer switches and these babies are smart dimmer switches. So you can turn the lights off and on like this just by pressing it. And then you um, use your finger to go up and down. And then you can also control it from your phone or you can um, link it to Alexa, which I haven't done yet, but you can link it to Alexa. So you just like shout in the room and she turns the lights on or whatever dimness you want. <laughs> I also, I was gonna do this one myself um, because I didn't require a tall ladder, but then I was just like, you know what? It's just easier. If they're already here, they're already here. They can install a dimmer switch. Let's do this light fixture too. <laughs> so I switched out this um, breakfast nook area light fixture and now it fits the vibe so much more wow look at her go look at her go but i really like the way that this light fixture looks at night because one it's not a, a bright light at all which is perfect so it's like still very moody in here and two it creates this like starburst on the ceiling that's just so pretty and it makes like such a pretty ambiance in here. I just can't even. I didn't even know you had the capability, Mr. Light. So I had them also add a dimmer switch to this one and a dimmer switch to this light here because this light is also very bright. So we got a dimmer switch here. And I have two more dimmer switches. This is, oh yeah, this is the kind I got. Shout out to Ray for finding these, uh, you know, our contractor friend Ray. I have a few more. I think I'm gonna add them to the bedroom when we inevitably add light fixtures up there, but house is coming along. Oh, did I show you updates on these fiddle leaf fig propagations? Oh my goodness. This one grew new leaves. This one is growing new leaves. This baby will not stop growing leaves. I'm like, whoa, you are on fire. Wait, no, stop. These propagations are so much bigger now. Let me show you. They're like full grown trees. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Whole grown ass trees. What are you doing, little propagations? You were so small before. Now look how many leaves you have. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me during this cool event, uh, this crazy part of my life that I am still processing and that continues to unfold in the most delightful ways I, I could not I have I don't think I've ever been happier in my life and not just because of this particular event but just because of 
everything that has happened in my life so quickly since we moved to Vegas. After this event happened, I got so many people messaging me, asking me so many questions like, how did I get started? What did I study? Um, what particular resources can I direct them to? And all kinds of stuff about the whole poker, the journey as a whole. Um, and so I really wanna do a separate video and I've been talking about doing a video for a while now, like I think like six months I've been talking about doing this separate poker video, mostly because a lot of you don't know what I'm saying when I talk about poker and poker hands and you just were like, hey, can you just explain like some of these words? So yeah, I've wanted to do this forever and now it's been over a year since I uh, started the whole journey. So uh, I will, yeah, I would love to do a separate video. That's coming out. I already have it. Everything I want to say, it's, uh, it's going to be a it's gonna be some work uh, condensing it into one video, but I'm gonna try to answer all of those questions. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that will come. I procrastinated editing this video because I don't want to repeat a lot of this in that separate video, but that might happen. So just letting you know. FYI. And you know what? I'm gonna get caught up in these vlogs. I don't know how long it's gonna take me, but we are gonna move into the real time very quickly. Hopefully by Vlogmas, we'll be caught up. Also, this ending's taking forever, but if you're interested in poker content in real time, uh, follow me on twitch.tv slash tricknix. I've been streaming all the online poker tournaments that I do, usually on Sundays. So see you over there, and I'll see you soon. Bye! I'm a scrub, but you still love me, you love me. I'm a scrub, but you still love me, you love me Even though I don't make no money You've been there when the times get ugly